Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today Ozo 9 has just been released, which is the newest update to Isotope's mastering plugin. So this is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I do use a lot of Isotope's products, some of them I absolutely love, like RX7. Others I have a little bit of criticism for. However, I'm going to take a first look at this plugin and share with you some of the cool new features that I think they got really, really right. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at these new features and not doing an entire tutorial of this plugin, which will be coming in the future. So this should be quite a quick video looking at those features and also some interesting future developments it makes me think of. Anyway, let's just dive right into the video. So just to get started, Ozone 9 comes in two versions, Standard and Advanced. The Advanced is more expensive and comes with a few more features, but you can check the website to find out more about that. And it's designed to be a standalone mastering plugin, which has all the different sort of plugins and modules you'd need built into it. So you can run it standalone or in any DAW, I'm using it in FL Studio. And just for anyone that doesn't know, you've got these modules along the top and the signal flow runs from left to right. So you've got different modules such as EQ, dynamics, limiters, and there's a whole load of different modules you can load. Some of them are very standard like EQs. Others are sort of like vintage tape machines, imagers and exciters to add some more tone. And you can change the order of any of these modules. For the launch of this plugin, Isotope have put a lot of effort and energy into the master rebalance module, which is new, and also the new low end focus module. However, I think there's a lot of other smaller updates that really add up to making this a really big and substantial update. The first thing I want to talk about is the efficiency of the plugin. So on my system, and I'll put my specs up here, this plugin runs about 20% more efficient. In the testing I've done, it's between about 15 and 25% less load on the CPU when I'm running the same mastering chain in Ozone 8 and 9 with exactly the same presets loaded. Now this figure of 20% is just what I experienced and there's more information about the testing I did in the description. This is going to vary for absolutely everybody. Some people might see no improvement at all. I really don't know. Also, when loading the plugin, Ozone 8 always just used to take a few seconds, maybe three or four seconds on my machine, which never really bothered me. I'm quite patient, but Ozone 9 just loads up almost instantly. I just click it and within one second, it's open and ready to be used. So clearly there's something going on under the hood that makes version nine way more efficient than version eight. The next thing I want to talk about is the user interface design. Isotope have clearly gone with a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it attitude, which I love. But this has left a few people disappointed saying, oh, there hasn't been a, a big UI update. But if you actually dive into it and start using it, it's quite a radical change to the user interface. So just a quick glance between the two, you can see that originally, you know, the, this EQ module is quite bloated with all of these different uh, uh, settings down here, which I don't need to access most of the time. These are what I call the set and forget settings. So it's like you click on them once and then you probably never change them again. And there are a few different view modes, but none of them are particularly useful. Whereas going over to Ozone 9, they've streamlined this whole experience. So it loads up with a much more clean interface. It's smoother, it's more dynamic, and you do have the option to select and have all of these available to you. But if you don't need that much visual feedback, you can just go back to this view and you can still access everything just by clicking on an individual token. And now for the one that everybody's been talking about, which is that you can resize the interface from the bottom right hand corner, just like that, which is absolutely lovely. It's exactly what you'd expect. It's amazing that it's taken them this long to do it, but I'm happy for them. Furthermore, there's been a whole host of small workflow improvements inside each module, such as uh, inside the EQ, you can actually alt solo a band as you're EQing it now. So previously you could just solo parts of the frequency spectrum. But if I press play up here, if I press alt and select a band, I can actually solo it as I EQ and really dive in and hear what I'm doing which I know for a lot of people is really, really important. It's what you'd expect in an EQ, and I'm just glad that it's got it now. Within most of the modules, there's lots of little optimizations made to the user interface that just make them slightly more streamlined and more pleasant to use, such as in the maximizer. This display here is a lot more fluid, and it actually gives you a lot more information about what you're actually doing. So you can see with a lot more detail how the compression and limiting is acting on your mix. Let's now look at those two new modules, the Master Rebalance and Low End Focus. So what Master Rebalance does is it lets you focus the vocals, bass or drums and make those louder or quieter in the mix. And RX7, the other software from Isotope, has a really good feature that can do this sort of thing. 
So I was excited about this one, but I also thought that it might be more of a novelty because there's only three options. And I thought, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. But on testing it out, there's a really, really good situation where I can see myself using this absolutely all the time, which I'll get to right now. So let's take a listen to what it does. So if I just play this mix here, you don't know me. say I want to boost just the vocals, I just select vocals here and boost them. Or lower them. And what's interesting is that if you listen to all the synths and the guitars around the vocals, those are not really boosted or cut very much at all. It really does selectively focus in on the vocals. Let's listen to the drums, and I'm going to go to the final chorus just here. So again, that really did make a dramatic difference. Now, I'm not entirely sure that I would use this while mastering a track, but what it does is it gives me a fantastic tool to use to show a mix engineer or artist what their mix would sound like if the vocals were louder or quieter, or if the drums were more punchy. And often, once you've got a two track and you're mastering it, simply raising the vocals is not actually very simple, because if you just quickly EQ or try to compress something, it always compresses everything else and it EQs and brings everything up around those vocal frequencies, so to speak. Whereas this tool really does focus in on the vocals and brings them up or down. So what I can now do is lower those vocals down, quickly export a version, then send it back to the artist and say, hey, I was thinking the vocals were just too loud in the chorus. Do you like how they sound lowered? And if they do, you could then ask them to lower the vocals within the mix itself, because that's always a better way to achieve this than during the mastering. And then now you can master that new mix with the vocals a little bit lower or louder, just depending on what you asked for. And I think that this tool is just a really, really quick one for me, just one fader. I can just push the vocals up and say, hey, it's not final, but why don't you raise them in the mix and then I can master it even better. And the second module which has been added, which is new to this version, is the low-end focus, which is supposed to be a completely new, uh, you know, world's first sort of processor for processing and sculpting the low end of your mix, whether that's the bass or the kick. And I've had some really mixed results with this. It definitely does something, that's for sure. And I think it could be really interesting during the mixing phase, but I'll just let you take a listen to it. So there's two settings, punchy and smooth. So the contrast is sort of like, you know, more punchy, less punchy, or smooth in this case, more smooth, less smooth, that sort of thing. And then the gain just lets you sort of pull up the volume of all the process signal. What I'll do is just add a little bit of this punchy setting in, up the gain a little bit, and then I'll just sort of turn it on and off and let the module do the talking. Need to prove that I am different. So again, that is a really dramatic difference. I don't know if I'd want to rely on doing a lot of that during mastering, but what I found this tool really useful for was trying to make sure that I wasn't over compressing my bass because often having a, a really over compressed bass is a sign of you know, a really weak or poorly done mastering job. And sometimes you just wonder, I wonder what it would sound like if that bass was just a little bit more punchy. And with this tool, I can just very quickly dial it up, check to see what it sounds like being more punchy, and if I like it being more punchy, maybe I can go back earlier on in my chain, reduce the compression a little bit. So what I find the best thing about these two tools, Master Rebalance and Low End Focus, is that they just very quickly let you test new things with your master or your mix. And you might not want to use them on your final file necessarily. You still could, there's nothing stopping you. But it very quickly lets me hear a completely different version of my master. And then maybe I can go and achieve the same results using other more traditional processors. That's how I'm going to use them anyway. But moving swiftly on, one of the next big updates is to the Mastering Assistant, which is designed to give you a really good starting point for your masters. Now, I've recommended using this in the past just as a starting point. I typically try to do my mastering from scratch, but often this just gives you a good place to start. It usually doesn't mess things up. It usually gets it just in an okay neutral place. If I just quickly open up the Mastering Assistant on Ozone 8, you can see that it only gave you three options, Streaming, CD, or Reference, and the CD gave you a few different intensity settings, so there's really not much there. It still worked, 
but there wasn't a lot of options. Whereas in Ozone 9, you've got modern and vintage, so you can choose to use those vintage sort of colored modules for the loudness and EQ. You can load in a reference track, or you can choose manual, low, medium, and high intensity. And then you can choose streaming or CD. So overall, there's just a lot more options to choose from. I haven't used all of them, but I did like the results that the vintage on medium gave me. And modern, I typically go for medium or high intensity, and it seems to work really well. I've been really impressed with the way Isotope are really trying to push forward machine learning and artificial intelligence. I know that like those are just really huge buzzwords in 2019, but I think they're doing a really good job of it, including it in these plugins. And I think they do nothing but help what we're doing and help us learn. And I don't think they're taking away anyone's jobs or anything like that. I think they're just helping us understand how these tools work and helping us all get our foot in the door, especially if we're not so experienced. And the final update is to the tonal balance control. We now have tonal balance control too. It's one of my favorite plugins that I use on every single mix and master. It comes with the advanced version of Ozone 9. So what this does is it helps you uh, hear and see the tonal balance of your song a little bit differently. So it lets you know how much energy is in the low, low mids, high, different regions, broad and fine. And there's some presets for different types of music. There used to be three different presets based on tens of thousands of different mastered songs. And again, on the face of it, it doesn't look that much different, but they've really overhauled it. So there's a ton more presets, which is absolutely excellent. You really get a chance to fine tune the tonal balance for a specific genre you're trying to produce within. Say for instance, on this master, I'm gonna choose bass heavy, and I'm just gonna to keep to the broad processing. And if I press play, let's go through some of the new features. So previously, the only way you could hear the different tonal balances separated was to press Alt and select them like this, just like you can with your EQ. But now you have a solo option for each band. I am so you can really hear what's going on and exactly what contributes to that band so you know how to adjust it in your mix or master. Me. So I can really hear which parts of the vocals are contributing to the high mid. Or if I don't have enough low mid, what do I need to add more of? Furthermore, I think that it really neatly integrates with the other plugins that you have open from Isotope. So you can select your plugins. So in this case, it's opening the equalizer inside Ozone 9. So if I open up Ozone 9 here, you can see that when I adjust here, it makes adjustments here as well. You could do this in the past, but I don't think it was as slick as this. The idea is if you're using lots of, you know, instances of Neutron or Ozone or different uh, Isotope plugins throughout your mix or master, you could actually select all of them here. I only have one here. And you can adjust all the EQs from within this plugin until your tonal balance is sitting in the right place instead of having to open, say, 10, 20 different plugins across your mix. Overall, I'm really impressed with this new update. However, if you've just bought Ozone 8 or you're still currently using Ozone 8, I wouldn't really worry about upgrading to the newest, latest, shiniest plugin because I'm probably still going to be using Ozone 8 for ages. I love it. I trust it. It's a fantastic plugin. I wouldn't describe Ozone 9 as like a total breakthrough of a plugin, but it really is neat that they've clearly responded to what users have wanted. And they've kept pushing things down the good directions instead of just, you know, chasing after crazy, silly ideas that no one really wants, which is a really good thing to see. What I think might happen in the future, we might be a couple of years away from this, I'm not sure, is the option of having plugins like this deeply integrated within a DAW. So in the same way that Studio One is integrated with Melodyne, where Melodyne is just built into each track, I can see in the future there being an option within your DAW to, you know, have it embedded, like deeply rooted, have these plugins built into your mixer, having it built in so that it was simple for you to use and just absolutely maximally efficient because the two programs were just designed in unison. We might still be many years away from that, but that is something really cool that I would like to see. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that too. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped you in some way and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.